In today's video, I'm going to show you the top Solana DeFi strategies for July 2024. These are ways to use your crypto to earn yield and qualify for airdrops on the Solana network. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. As a reminder, nothing in this video is financial advice and anything that involves crypto, especially anything that involves smart contracts, carries risk. And so although I'll do my best to outline all the risks in this video, be sure to do your own research before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Now let's get into it. To start, let's remember our cardinal rules about DeFi. First rule is that you always want to use these DeFi strategies with tokens that you wanted to hold anyways. When you see people get completely wrecked in DeFi when they're yield farming, a lot of times it's because they saw some pool that had some insane yield, like a thousand percent APR. And so they bought the tokens specifically to deposit into that pool without really doing any research on them. And the result was that either the yield was temporary or the yield was hyperinflationary, token price crashed, and person's money disappeared. So instead, the way to look at yield farming, way to look at airdrop farming, is we're taking tokens that we wanted to hold anyways, say Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc., and we are finding ways to earn yield on those tokens and to use those tokens to qualify for airdrops. So basically we're taking assets that either were not yield bearing or earning, or earning a low yield and we're finding ways to earn high yield on them. So the yield is sort of like the frosting on the cake, but the cake is the tokens that you wanted to hold. Now, and then another rule is that smart contract risk is very real. And so when I show these strategies today, I'm gonna to try to start with the strategies that are in my opinion, less risky, moving to the strategies that are more risky from smaller protocols. However, understand that all of these things carry some risk. All right, enough talking, let's get into some of these specific strategies. So to start, the overall TVL situation on Solana is looking pretty good, even though the price is down from where it was even earlier this year. TVL is almost back to its local high, uh, still below its high from 2021, but based on the current trajectory, I feel pretty confident that this is going to break its all-time high from 2021. Just the ecosystem of projects is so much more vibrant and the usage on Solana is so much higher now. If you look, for example, at DEX volume on Solana, you can see that it's been going completely crazy, particularly the past couple days. We'll see if these are an anomaly or not. All right, so where can you earn yield on Sol if you want to participate in this ecosystem? First place that I think is worth looking is a protocol that's been growing very quickly recently and that is known as soul layer so layer is a restaking platform on solana so you may remember eigenlayer from ethereum that's restaking on ethereum and basically what soul layer does is it allows you to take liquid stake soul and then deposit it into soul layer so you're restaking it and the idea eventually is that this liquid stake soul is in addition to securing the solana network it's also going to secure other things such as other app networks layer twos other applications on solana so it's known as soul layer and i will say with this i am depositing into it and i'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a second i'm depositing into it but not with a ton reason being that first off I think that a lot of the restaking related airdrops on Ethereum ended up being not as lucrative as people expected. So I'm expecting that something similar might play out on Solana. Second off, and this is related to the first point, there are already 73,000 depositors. And I expect that some of these are gonna be flagged as Sybils or they're gonna be too small amounts to qualify. But anyways, I consider this airdrop to be very competitive, uh, but maybe it's FOMO. I still wanna qualify, so I am depositing. First thing you'll need to do is launch the app and we'll use this button called launch app on the home page this will bring you to app.soullayer.org and next you will have to connect your wallet and note if you're using a ledger wallet you have to check this button right here but for this demo i'm going to use a regular phantom wallet so i had to confirm a transaction next thing i'll have to do is do some social actions so you'll have to join their discord you'll have to follow them to use it i'm going to go ahead and do both of those things and now I had already done them, which is why it verified it so quickly. Next, I'm gonna click next, and I need to enter an invite code. And you can probably find one online. However, if you want to use mine or want a quick one, here it is. 
it is JPV332. So it was pretty quick there, but it's JPV332. We'll also link it down in the description. Now you're ready to deposit, and you can deposit either Soul, Marinade Stake Soul, Jito Stake Soul, Belay Stake Stake Soul, or Infinity, which is the Sanctum liquid staking token. So most of the major liquid staking tokens on Solana, you can deposit here, uh, and then you'll start qualifying. Uh, you can see here that they have this interesting uh, incentives program called Episode 1 to start to uh, claim your participation in it. You have to do three of these tasks, such as getting a permanent referral link by depositing 10 soul. You need to refer users who have deposited, invite at least three people, participate in two epochs. There's there's a variety of these things. Uh, but I think if you're actually using the protocol, you'll find that it's not that difficult to get to three, especially if you're able to invite anyone. Next up, we have a protocol that I think is the best risk reward out of any of these projects I'll talk about today, and that is Jupiter. Jupiter is one of the most used applications on Solana, and they're used for a number of things. First off, they have a widely used DEX aggregator. And so what this does, if you're swapping tokens on Solana, rather than having to go to the specific decentralized exchange that has that token or trying to figure out which token is going to give you the best prices, you swap through Jupiter and it finds the prices for you. However, what they also have and what's more significant to us today is they are one of the most used perp dexes on Solana. Basically, that means they allow you to trade with leverage using something known as derivatives. And so you can trade Sol, you can trade ETH, you can trade BTC. And uh, that's great, especially for those of you who actually want to trade those things. But what's relevant to us as DeFi users is you can actually provide liquidity to other people who are trading these things. And what's really neat is that perp trading has consistently proven to be one of the best businesses in crypto, both for centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. And what Jupiter does is they pass on the fees from people who are perp trading to you if you're providing liquidity. And so even though there's nearly $500 million of liquidity provided right now, you can earn 35% APY. And the place that comes from is 75% of the generated fees, as well as traders PL. And specifically, we'll talk about this more when we go through the risks. It comes from their L. So when traders lose money, they get liquidated. Those losses for them become winnings for you if you're in JLP. So basically, you're the house in the casino, and generally speaking, the house wins. And so if you look at the actual allocation here, uh, what makes this pool, I think, even more interesting, and I talked about the risk reward being very good, is that you can earn that yield by holding tokens that if you're a crypto user, I know I'm I'm a crypto user, and I want to hold these tokens anyways. So Sol, for example, the Solana network, 46% uh, of JLP, ETH is around 11%, BTC is around 9%, and the rest is USDC and USDT. So basically by getting exposure to this portfolio of blue chips and stable coins, you are earning 35%. And your upside will be more muted than if you were just holding these tokens because of the stable coins, but it will also be less volatile to the downside. And if you look at the price of JLP over time, so keep in mind this is incorporating both the prices of the tokens that comprise it, but it's also comprising the yield that they're earning and the, the fees they're collecting, etc. Uh, you can see it's almost been up only. And remember that the prices of these things haven't been up only, right? There's been lots of times they were up, down. And you can see that within weeks, it's often been down or it's been down slightly for a few weeks in a row here. But right now, it's basically at an all-time high. And what's interesting is that the tokens that comprise it, Sol, ETH, BTC, those are not at all-time highs. But JLP is because it's been accruing yield this entire, entire uh, year as these tokens moved up and down, uh, but generally went up in price. Uh, so I think that this is is honestly um, extremely interesting. And part of me is tempted to just throw my portfolio into here and uh, have an easy summer. Uh, but there are some risks that you should be aware of. First off, and kudos to Jupiter for noting these on their documents. When there's a bull market, JLP may not outperform Sol, ETH, and BTC, right? Uh, even though we saw here it was going up, it went up less than if you were holding these tokens, for example, especially in this part when the tokens were, were going up a lot. Like it still went up, but just not as much. Uh, and then there's the PL dynamics. So traders loss is your gain. However, traders gains are your loss. So if there's a situation where net 
the traders are winning a lot. For example, it's mega bull market time and all the tokens are going up and everyone's just leveraging long. Someone's got to give them that money and it's you as the liquidity provider. And same thing, if someone uh, is really successful at shorting, there could be times when you lost money. And there are actually even more reasons why holding JLP could be an interesting opportunity. Although Jupiter's already done one airdrop, they've heavily implied that they're going to do future airdrops. And I think it's pretty likely that if and when they do that, that they're going to reward the people who deposit into JLP. And by that, I mean they're going to give all or most of the second Jupiter airdrop to people who were in JLP. Reason being that swap is great and they rewarded people on the swap in the first one. However, perp dexes are what make money and I think Jupiter has a really strong interest to reward people who deposit into the perp dex and to incentivize more people to provide liquidity in their perp dex in the future. Uh, even better than that, if you do decide to hold JLP and you want to take on a little more risk, maybe, maybe earn even uh, more yield or do some trading, uh, you can actually deploy JLP into DeFi. For example, you can go over here to Camino, the leading money market on, on Solana, and you can deposit your JLP as collateral. And you don't earn any APY for supplying it. However, what you can do is you can supply it, and then you can borrow another token like USDC. Uh, and then you can either trade with that, earn yield with it, swap it for something else. I just understand that when you're applying leverage here, you're taking on extra risk. You, in theory, run the risk of being liquidated, or even worse, if you, for example, swap your USDC for more JLP, as many people do, or you swap it for Solana to go long, and then the price of that drops, then you might end up owing more than you have. Uh, so understand the risk, but if you have looked at that and you're comfortable with it, uh, this could be another good way to, to put your JLP to work. All right, so let's keep looking at some opportunities here. Sanctum is a liquid staking token platform, uh, and where Sanctum stands out is they make it really easy for participants in the Solana ecosystem to deploy their own LST, specifically validators. So a lot of validators now have their own liquid staking tokens through Sanctum as a new revenue stream. And they've announced their first airdrop already. They're gonna airdrop their cloud token and I'm recording this video on July 16th. The airdrop is currently scheduled for July 18th. So it's gonna be happening not too long after this video is published. But if you've been using Sanctum since I talked about it, then be sure to check whether you've qualified. You can go to Jupiter's LFG launchpad, so back to Jupiter. That's where they're launching cloud from. And you can go here and connect your wallet and just check if you, if you qualified or not. One other protocol that I think could be a good source of yield and also a future potential airdrop is Meteora. I talked about Meteora on this channel before, but it's a liquidity protocol, so they don't have a front end for swapping. However, you can provide liquidity and then aggregators like Jupiter itself can actually tap into this liquidity. And they have a unique way of providing concentrated liquidity that allows you to, in some cases, earn higher yields. So for example, by providing liquidity between Sol and LST, LST is the margin phi liquid staking version of Sol, then you can earn 25% yield, at least uh, as of as of the recent 24 hours. This is of course gonna fluctuate over time. Uh, and so, so I think that there's some decent opportunities to earn yield here. Again, these will fluctuate, uh, but sometimes some days you might be earning 20% or more on basically just getting exposure to Sol. Just understand that every protocol you deposit into adds another layer of smart contract risk. Uh, but on top of that, Meteora also has an ongoing points program. So they're very likely to do some sort of airdrop at some point. You can see here that points tracking is live. To wrap things up, I'm gonna go through a couple smaller DeFi protocols that are growing rapidly. However, understand that these come with elevated risk, either because they're small or because they allow you to take on leverage. That being said, let's look at some of these protocols. First off is Rain.Fi. This protocol has grown rapidly since April from less than a million dollars in deposits to nearly $4 million in deposits now. Understand it's still way smaller than some of these other protocols that had hundreds of millions of dollars of deposits. Uh, that being said, it's an interesting concept. It's a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform that lets anyone create their own lending pool with custom interest and conditions in order to lend on different assets like tokens, NFTs, and real-world assets. 
And so that may interest you if you want to participate in their lending pools. However, even if you don't, they also have this droplets points program. And so, you know, what points means, it means there's probably going to be an airdrop at some point on here. Uh, so you can check it out. Maybe if you have some NFTs on Solana, you have something that you would want to participate in with this. Um, or if you don't, then then uh, maybe you want to play around with the peer-to-peer -peer lending of tokens. Uh, that being said, I, I think the real appeal here for me is the fact that they have this, this um, likely airdrop in the future. And if the protocol keeps growing, then that airdrop is just likely to, um, to become more and more valuable. Next up, I have this other protocol called NX Finance. This is even smaller, but is growing even faster. Since the start of July, it's grown from around $300,000 in deposits to nearly $3 million now. And understand that yield aggregators are one of the highest smart contract risk types of projects because you're depositing not just into the yield aggregator, but you're also depositing into the protocol that is actually earning yield in the first place. So if something happens to either of those, you are harmed. Uh, that being said, this has an interesting way to earn additional yield on your JLP. What NX Finance does is it allows you to do leveraged yield farming on JLP. So basically, you provide your JLP as collateral, and then you are borrowing either USDT or USDC to lever up to 5x. And the result of this is that you can earn up to 200% plus APY. However, this comes at the expense of, or rather it comes with extra risk because every amount you lever up, if the price of JLP goes down, you run the risk of getting liquidated. So I will say that I personally am not electing to do this. I think that JLP is quite good on its own and the amount I would have to put in here to make it worthwhile would be more than I'm comfortable putting into a protocol this small. Uh, that being said, maybe for some of you that have different risk tolerances or want to play around with a new protocol that in fact has an airdrop section on their website, maybe it's a maybe it's an interesting opportunity. If you like this sort of analysis and these sorts of DeFi strategies, be sure to check out my newsletter, dynamodefi.substack.com. Every single week I send out the latest on-chain analysis to help you understand what's happening on chain. Here we see, for example, the decentralized exchange volume on Radium, the leading DEX on Sol was surging last week. And then I also share a farm or airdrop opportunity every week. That way you can stay on top of the best ways to earn yield in the market. And for more videos like this one, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dan Modify.